Welcome to the Entrepreneur Summit and my interview with Anne Wilson, who is the author of The Wealth Shape. Welcome, Anne, and thank you so much for your time today. Oh, it's such a pleasure to be here. Firstly, an opportunity to talk money, wealth, all the components that really are so vital for us being able to live a full, wealthy, juicy, abundant life. It's a pleasure. I love it. I love your enthusiasm for for wealth because it is, you know, what makes one enjoy life to the full and also it makes a lot of people happy. So let's not shy about it. Let's talk about it. Well, I think it's even more than that. I think there's a lot of charge around what does it mean to be wealthy? What does it mean to be rich? What does it mean to be poor? What does it to be spiritual? What does it to be a good person or a hard worker or a lazy? And so the reality is money weaves through every aspect of our life. It leaves reads through the physical components of just being able to be safe to be able to have a roof over our head, to have access to opportunity, to be able to feed ourselves, protect our family. It weaves up through our ability to have access to opportunity, to be able to explore and express, to be able to earn and, and be fully human. It gives us opportunities to then start expressing creativity and power. So those are the sort of ex responses to this thing called money, but also because of how it's, it just is so interwoven with almost everything, it also is deeply interwoven with our identity, who we believe we are, our value structures and our systems. And so there is this reality that it is literally woven into our cells and our being, yet it is also a subject so full of charge, so mm -hmm. full of taboo. You mustn't boast, you know. You, you must you want to have money, but not too much. Or what does it mean to have this? Or how do you get it? X, Y, and Z. So when we can start having clean, empowered conversations around money, what it means to create wealth, I find now having spoken to literally thousands and thousands of people over the world and my journey as well, Chef, helping people create real sustainable financial freedom and understanding what that actually is. There's this almost extraordinary relief that comes about in this topic where there's very few places that is actually clean conversation. It's not full of charge and shame or, you, you know, you're missing out, whatever it is. So that is what we are going to be going deep in, in the session. Oh, that is so exciting. And I, if we could just put this in perspective and frame where you are, you're currently in the African bush at your bush house, aren't you? I am. Uh, maybe I'll add a little video in for the presentation. So I have a beautiful home in the bush in the Greater Kruger, right on the Olifants River. I have elephants and giraffes. There's no fences around. And this has also been part of my own journey of dream of what getting to a point of one, a deep permission piece, but also having the financial resources to be able to design and live life that is wealthy for me. Mm -hmm. And I think this is so important. One of the key threads that I will be covering in, in the talk is how do we get clear on what is your own unique freaky wealth recipe? And I say that because we have to really come back to what's my truth. Actually, what lights me up? What brings me alive? Because at the end of the day, money is meant to be in service of life, not the other way around. Mm -hmm. Yet so much of what we're taught about earning money, we all become, we are trained to be slaves at the altar of income. Yeah. And so a huge part of the wealth journey is how do you actually shift that around? How do you get money to be in service of you being able to live your greatest life? But to, in order to do that, you've got, we've got to know what the bleep we want. Mm. And it sounds, oh, you know, and at the first level, might say, you know, design your dream life. And people want to say, oh, I want to have holidays all over the world. And I want to have 17 homes and I want the Learjet and the yacht. And then we go, great. Okay, this is the, the this high level buzz because we are fed magazines, TV series, Instagram feeds, motor that tells us that's success, that's wealthy. Now, I'm not going to shame anybody's truth if that is genuinely there. But often if we can slow right down and go, well, do I actually know what brings me joy? What lights me up? What turns me on? Mm -hmm. When this we need to get really clear, because if we are believing we need to create a life that is not ours, but it's that with one that we think we need to have in order to be loved, to fit in, to be feel significant and have status, all of those things are part of our needs. But this is where you'll see a lot of people who might have money 
but there's no real wealth. There's no joy. There isn't this peace of being in mind. So for me, the bush, being able to contribute to anti-poaching, to be able to be deeply part of animals and conversation is a deep part of my wealthy life recipe travel but there's a lot of things that aren't and so when we can strip away and get really clear this is what actually is the life that i want there's a great clarity clarity gives us focus we then know what to direct to but it also gives a framework to know what to spend our money on and we read and i so one of the key things i'll be covering is how to be a wealthy spender when often when people think about being good with their money, it's about frugality and what you can't have and, you know, pack your lunch and you know, don't have that cappuccino. But actually for most people, because there isn't this consciousness of really, really what is it that I want, when we know that, we can start directing our time, energy, and our money to that. But more so, we can strip away the things that aren't. And so actually, most people's wealthy lives have got a lower price tag than they think. And I'm saying that, yes, living in a beautiful bush, larger in the bush. Mm-hmm. But when you strip away the stuff that doesn't suit you and you start building this integrity with yourself and congruence, there's also a freedom that comes from knowing you're no longer betraying yourself. Mm -hmm. So true wealth is when you are able to direct your money, your time, and your energy, the key resources that were given to create this life, to the things that are truly yours as an expression of your innate worthiness Mm -hmm. versus spending our lives, spending our time, energy, and our money trying to do things externally in order to get worthiness. And that is a very good indicator when we're going to be depleted. So I'm getting a little bit woo-woo here, but it's this is absolutely a key component. Well, I think you're striking on something that is termed psychology because every human has a psychology and that is what, as you say, either grounds them, lights them up, makes them feel worthy or not. And I suppose when you're working with people, you're going to be looking at their psychology and deciding, you know, do they have that innate ability, A, to know themselves that well and B, to achieve that goal? Because very few people do. Most of us are just you know, in the different, in also in your different phases of life, when you're bringing up children, your focus is so on children and you can get drowned in that. Or, you know, when, you, when you're when you studying and you're doing your PhDs and you, you're specializing, your focus is on that. So it's really hard to wake up at some phase in your life and say, I need to do this and I need to do it soon, not to feel time urgent. And then do I have the aptitude for it? So I think it's not about aptitude. Creating wealth is not a skill set. It's not something that you're born with. So one of the key things I want everybody to know is nobody popped out the womb being great with money. Good to know. (laughs) It is a learned skill. This is not about a certain, you know, mass aptitude. This is about our relationship with life and money. Second, 80% of creating wealth and being able to live a wealthy life is behavioral. It's our behavioral pattern. So we do need to get really clear of what's going on. And yes, there needs to be this deep self-awareness. Where do I have patterns or running patterns that are disempowering, that are taking me away from my wealth and my freedom and what are taking me towards it? Mm -hmm. But underlying that, there are a set of rules, recipes, hence why it's called the Wealth Chef, that when in my own journey, I'll give a quick little summary of my journey, that how I got to the point where I am financially free, I've been financially free, this is my 18 year of being completely financially free and what that means is i have enough assets we're going to talk about investments that grow in value and earn income that pays for my chosen lifestyle coming back to what i want not what magazines say i should have to be well my chosen lifestyle indefinitely so for 18 years i haven't had to worry about where money is coming from for 18 years i've been able to have the ultimate freedom which is the freedom of self-determination freedom of choice Mm -hmm. how do i want to spend my time who do i want to spend it with where do i want to spend it freedom to be able to direct my energy and my resources to my passion which is helping people with their financial well-being and their money and help them get to this point of freedom coming back to money and service of each of us being free to live the greatest version of our life. So should I give a little bit of where I oh, came yes. from? And what- yes, about that. Yeah. Just, just like everybody, I certainly did not pop out the womb with an <laughs> abacus attached to me or um, knowing anything about wealth. 
in fact, I, I grew up in KZN, in KwaZulu Natal in South Africa, and I'm number five of six kids, so this big horde, and very much an average middle class family, where was, which, which was the professional family, you know, go and get a degree and get a good job. But so study hard, work hard, and then you'll be okay. So that was the mantra I had. But also a fan of um, with – so father did the working, mother did the trying to make sure these kids didn't kill each other. So that was also the model that I had, the masculine, the feminine, the male, the female roles. And – but there was also stories, you know, money doesn't grow on trees, don't be greedy, or even things like a bit of shaming of ostentatious wealth, rich, you know, oh, you know, Nouveau Riche had no idea what that meant, but I know you didn't want to be one of those. So there was all this confusion. <laughs> like you wanted money, but shit, you mustn't have too much. And did you know you've got to have a good job that's worthy, but you know, you mustn't make your money too easily. Don't be greedy. You want up, but no. And yeah. so I was like, yeah, well, this is a minefield oh, yeah. of you know, <laughs> money stuff. You know, if you asked for something like, no, don't be greedy, or don't you realize how hard your father works? Like, oh, shit. So <laughs> All of those things that people might be able to relate. And then my father died when I was relatively young. So I was just, luckily, the other kids were already uh, left home and side. And I got to watch my mum, who had handled the day-to-day -day aspects of the family, suddenly now in a position where she had a small amount of money that she had now got from some life insurance and some investments my father had, but not knowing what to do with it. How much was enough? Who could she trust? What was the plan? How did she make sure that she looked after this so that she ran out before the money does? Mm. And I made that very clear because so many people are living lives of devastating desperation around their money. That mm. this pervading fear that will I end up destitute on a park bench? And the reality is, two out of three people in the developed world, forget about developing world, and women specifically, will have to rely on the charity of a stranger, on their kids, on heaven forbid a government, just to survive. Mm -hmm. Not because they've been stupid or something, but we're not taught how to create real sustainable wealth. And I watched my mother in this position. And these are professional side. This is not, this is just mm -hmm. not, ever being taught well, what does it actually mean to create wealth and financial safety and security and I vowed well I never wanted to be that afraid that place and also none of us kids knew how to help her it was like we were all clueless like well, I don't know so I thought okay I'm going to do the recipe I'm going to get that good job and so I went and studied engineering you know how many of you in in, in your therapies and your surgery elements is like well okay this is you know get yeah. that good job I'm out of a passion for it, but my fundamental was, okay, get that good job. And I looked and men seem to have this money shit sorted. So I'll do what, you know, yeah. an engineering I mean, degree. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I studied civil engineering and off I set. And then I thought, okay. And before I knew, I graduated, I got that job. Yay, money started flowing in, but it flowed in even more. I was offered the overdraft and the credit card because I was a professional at this. And oh, wasn't I special and wonderful? But even there was another underlying story. I thought that that was what needed to be done. I thought that's what was the path. You needed to get the car on the car loan. You need to buy the property with the mortgage. You need to get all of this. And the very freedom that I'd been wanting, that freedom of anxiety from fear and anxiety, being able to feel I was safe and okay and opportunity to travel and explore, very soon was a thing of the past because now I was working for everybody else except me. Yeah. And very quickly I realized that if I lost my job or something happened to me, I could not last more than a month or so. Mm. That's not freedom. And the reality is some of you listening to this, maybe wherever you are on your journey, you, you might say right now, whatever these – the cost of the lifestyle that you've locked yourself into, repayments, mortgages, cars, kids, how long, if your current inflow stopped, could you maintain that lifestyle? If you have to keep working actively, you're not free. So this is my goal for every single person is get to the point where they have this ultimate freedom that they can be doing what they want to do. I work I work a lot because I love it. I think it's a privilege to work, but we do it out of joy and freedom, not fear. Yes. So suddenly I was in this place and realized, okay, 
I haven't got this sussed and I realized I needed to get out of debt. I'd got myself into a big debt hole and I knew that that there was no way to be out of that, that first layer except getting out of debt and that I needed to do something radical. I couldn't do it a bit here, a bit there. And if I wanted to truly live a life free and on my terms, it had to happen. So in many cases, we can also go, how do we create it so that we do something radical for a short period of time so that we can have what we want down the line? You know, a lot of people aren't prepared to project that gratification and the real benefits. So the more we can also look at oh, why we're doing things and bring future benefits forward, the more we're able to do some of the th- big shifts that we need to, which really gets us on a new path. But I went radical. I was hailing taxis. I got rid of my car. I did all sorts of stuff. <laughs> and I was prepared to make me and my freedom more important than other people's perceptions of me. Yeah. And so I was really able to go there and then also make it a game and fun. So I managed to get out of debt and I went and started traveling and I ended up in Hong Kong and I got a job there and I thought, okay, now I've got it sussed. Work hard, have a good job and stay out of debt and then save as much as I can. And so this was now my goal. Now, now I've got this money stuff sh- sorted. But in fact, I'd just gone from a sort of binging on money that wasn't mine to now an anorexia of going, how little could I live on? Because I thought, well, if I can build up a pile of money, then at some point I'll be able to do what I really want. The big challenge is I had no idea how much was enough. Mm -hmm. So for most people, how much is enough? Do you know what your target is? Do you know what your financial freedom number is? We're going to be covering that in the session. You're going to learn exactly what that is. But most people have no clue what enough is. So it's this endless proverbial carrot in front of the donkey. Just keep going more. If you just earn more. So I was building this up and I had no idea how much was enough, but also how to grow it. So I was hoarding money. I was learning how to save, but I had no idea how to get that money to work. And so it all, I was, I got married by this stage and it all blew up in a big messy money drama because everything was about contraction, what I couldn't have. And that very anxiety and stress that I was wanting to be free of was still there. And so my marriage and the money that I was holding on to walked out the door together and it was like, okay. So here I was, I'd been working for over 10 years by this stage, thinking I was doing the right thing back at zero and I felt sorry for myself for a bit I sat on that pity <laughs> and then I went okay hang on you know what yes I'm a blonde female but I don't think that's my problem <laughs> I know how to earn I know how to spend I've also even learned how to save but I have no idea how to get money working for me it was never taught to me at school by my family despite universities postgraduate degrees and business management and all sorts of stuff there was actually this void and I knew there was sort of investing, but where to go. And it also felt scary. It felt like, is it gambling? Is it, you know, those kind of people, certainly in those days, mostly we looked like men, but fortunately in my engineering, it'd been the same thing. So I thought, well, okay, we can do that, but where do you start? And I started reading books and I started exploring. I actually started trying to do some trading things. I very quickly learned that trading and investing are very different things. One's an income strategy, one's a wealth strategy. So it's important for us to know the difference. And so I first started with the stock market, but investing. And this then grew and I started going, ah, oh, okay, this is key. Assets create freedom, not income. And mm. this is so key. When I say to people, what do you want? They say they want more money. And I go, no, more money will not give you freedom. Assets will give you freedom because if you're just earning more money, you're never creating the sustainable base that can actually feed you. You need assets that can generate an wealth and money that's what we need to be focusing so we have to shift focus from how do i earn more how do i grow the business how do i get more top line revenue to how do i bring assets in my life that keep working so an asset simply put is anything that can grow in value and generate income independently for us Mm. so there's essentially eight different asset classes but they fall into big ones the stock market now the stock market is not actually we're not investing in the stock market what when we use that phrase we're saying it's actually other businesses we are investors in other businesses we own a share in a business and we benefit from the growth in that business and the income it generates without having to pitch up for a day's work so that's that asset class the next one is investment property and i know you've got a fantastic speaker on investment property a physical thing also called tangible assets grow in value generate income 
And then low input businesses. So these are where, and I, I hate that word passive. If you're trying to find a passive investment or passive thing to grow your money, be careful. You're going to get very pa passive results. There isn't such a thing. You have to still be the CEO, the CFO, the chief freedom officer of your life. You've got to oversee and look after your assets, but you're not involved in the generation. So I call them low input businesses where they you can use systems and processes and operations. So again, in most of your businesses, how are you using systems and processes and other people's time to expand your reach and deliver the value? So those are the three three big asset classes that we look at how do we bring those in life obviously lots of strategies within that and so this then started my journey and through then growing from equities stock market and in, into real estate investment property then building up businesses i got financially free within eight years from clueless and zero and feeling very sorry for myself to being in the place where I could live life on my terms 100% just took eight years. Now, some people go eight years. Oh my God, that sounds so long. And we've got to be careful of those monsters that want that instant fix because it's those people that fall for the get rich quick schemes. Mm. But eight years is actually a really short period of time when you consider less than 4% of the population in the world ever get to a point where they have enough assets that can pay for their chosen lifestyle. Absolutely. And so one of the key things as well, when we also have a plan and we know what we're doing and we know what these five recipes are and these key components and we just keep doing it better, we actually are free as soon as we start the journey mm -hmm. because now, oh, we know where we're headed. We know what enough is. We know the process we've got to do. Shit. This investing ain't so difficult. It's then just a matter of staying the course and getting better at it. So the freedom from that anxiety, that freedom from, are we doing the right thing? Are we ever going to get there? That's already gone. And this is what's so wonderful. You don't have to wait till the end of those eight years to be free. And I started that clueless. You know, so now you know, teach through my programs, Financial Freedom University and ever, people can achieve it in a much shorter period of time because they're already starting with a proven plan. So that is where I got to. And it was through that that I then started realizing, wow, my deepest passion is helping others to achieve this. And yes, there's the fun stuff of the first class airplane flights and the travel here and there and being able to do that. But for me, the most important is to be free of that fear and anxiety, to be free of the self-betrayal that comes from feeling you've got no choices, staying in a business that maybe is depleting and draining you because you don't know what else to do, staying in a relationship that's not serving. Mm. Just that is devastating that so many people are living these desperate lives and never, ever get to experience what it is to be fully alive, fully themselves, and they never get to know that. And so all of these other things are fantastic cherry on the top. But this for me is the difference between being wealthy and being rich. I think it's absolutely beautiful. Yeah, amazing. Sorry, I cut you short. You were going to say something else. No. <laughs> I'm just going to say that's also just one key distinction. Um, and we just all have to be aware of it. Listen, I love bling, you know, but I stop driving this. But anybody can be rich for a moment. They can get their credit card and hire a Ferrari for an hour and drive around the suburb. What's it? So I talk about rich being the external demonstration of having money, whether it's for a period of time, lot they can blow that. So a lot of people think the aim of their game is to be rich. So mm. rich is a bit like that iceberg, the stuff that you see, the car you drive, the home you live in, the school your kids go to, the clothes you wear, the handbag you have, the this, the side, all of those side, which is fine if they genuinely bring you joy. But again, you can create that in for a moment. Is it sustainable at what cost? Wealth, on the other hand, is the stuff that most people don't see. When I'm walking down the street, most people would not say Anne's wealthy. Most of the time I look like a bag lady, you know, <laughs> don't bother put that side on. But the wealth is that that vast net worth, those assets that keep growing in value, keep expanding, that give me this peace of mind because they can pay for my lifestyle. Something can happen. I've got buffers in place that there's more. I've got more than enough. And I keep growing my net worth because now I can live on less than 10% of the growth of my assets. And 90% I get to spend on conservation, and environmental projects, and things that light me up. This is wealth. When we're free of that anxiety, when we have these things, 
things in place where it's sustainable, it keeps going. And mostly when I'm able to slow down and listen to my truth and live my life honestly, truthfully, and congruently to what brings me joy, that is wealthy. And so it's nice to top up with a little bit of froth of rich, but what we're after and what I'm going to be sharing with you is how to create wealth. And it's interesting, the numbers, because that's what I know, what wealthy people know their numbers. You you might um, get to listen to my interview with Don Cromer, who's one of the presenters at the summit, um, extremely wealthy man, and he allocates himself 2% of his, of his net worth to play with, 2%, whereas I think a lot of us allocate 98% of our, our income to yeah. play and and so it's about that oh, mindset. Absolutely. And so there's a lot of really interesting research on what it also takes to get there. And so I will be covering in the session of, and that all fits under recipe number one, of how do we manage our money? We have to manage the money that comes in in our life and know what's going on and then allocate it. We have to be leaders to our money. Most people are slaves to it. And they don't give it any direction and, and it comes in and they just break even. And, you know, They match the cost of their lifestyle to what comes in. Wealthy people go, no, this is what my lifestyle, what I have available for my lifestyle, because I also need to be directing money to my freedom, to my growth, to my play, to my contribution. They're really clear that they divide money up that comes in. And so super important Then you grow your net worth on that and then even how do you consume that net worth to make sure it lasts for your lifetime and beyond because you want that freedom. You don't want to be eating down capital. But then wealthy people also know what's where their money is going. So they know where it's coming from. They direct it. Yes. Just like having amazing team members. Imagine if you employ staff for your in your practice, but you don't tell them what the hell they're meant to be doing. Yeah. You don't give them any job descriptions. You don't tell them, are they doing well? Adjust them side. Well, that's not going to work very well, but most people do that with their money. They work so hard to get it, and then as soon as it's in their life, they ignore it or they get rid of it as quickly as they can. It's like terrified to have money. So we've got to get comfortable. We've got to get intimate. We've got to give it leadership. And then how we spend it is key. Again, most people fixated, and if I can just bring more in. But our wealthy life and the quality of life and the futures we are creating is all happens at the back door. It all happens at where the choices we make with how we spend that money. Mm -hmm. And again, we can become far more conscious about the quality of how we spend. That's why I talk about being a wealthy spender. And for a lot of people, a significant amount of their outflow is unconscious. It's just leaks in their business. Like, are they actually using that thing? Because oh, I'm too busy to go and look at where that money is. They've got they've got subscriptions they've got insurances that they actually don't need they're not getting paid there's a lot of leaky back ends happening in many people's lives a big chunk of their money is spent on what i call depletion expenses trying to fit in think that they have to have that in order to you know meet their social standing or their professional standing or the kids have to you know have x y and z because heaven forbid little seppo or johnny you know felt uncomfortable. I, you know, I'm being a bit facetious there, but there's that. And for very few, for most people, very little of their, their outflow spent is actually consciously aligned to what is wealthy for them. And so this is where some of just the shift in all of these blocks. And that's why a wealthy life is an ecosystem. It's not just one investing strategy. It's not just how do you earn more. It's how do you work between these blocks of income, and outflow, and this is how money flows through our life, and assets and liabilities, the investments we have, and then the things we owe. And it's this relationship that creates absolute wealth expansion or depletion and going to money hell. Um, very exciting, and that you actually outlined the course for us. And also, um, this is a, uh, it's just a lecture, but you actually are sponsoring um, a course of yours. And do you want to tell us a little bit about that and yes. just in your book, six books, which is very exciting. So tell us a little bit about if they come to your lecture and they end up winning that prize, what journey will they go on with you? So um, I've got two signature programs. One's called Financial Freedom University and then one is Savvy Investor. So it's really so they're going to be getting the Savvy Investor training that is worth just under a thousand US dollars, 997. And um 
actually, if you buy it off the web, so that's a special that you can get. It's almost 1500 US dollars. But in that teaches you how to create assets and what it really is. So how do you know what your number is? how to evaluate what you already have. So if you've already got some retirement annuities or investment through a financial advisor, do you know whether they're good, bad, or indifferent? Do you know what the fees, the costs are? How to evaluate that? Then how to put together what you're actually needing and get your investment plan together. Then how to start investing, not trading, investing in what are called index tracker investments, passive investments, which are shown to outperform any other kind of stock market investment. So I teach you how how to open your platform, what to choose, how to put your portfolio together, and how to make your regular consistent investing in. Then it continues on once you've got this base in, is how to use digital-based platforms. I mean, the technology is extraordinary to then add other asset classes like property in through fractional investing, property sites, loan instruments through peer-to-peer -peer lending. So I add these other asset classes, but you build this core foundation of your stock market. So that is going to be the giveaway to one lucky person. And then for the rest of you, you can still join Savvy Investor. It is priceless. It sets you up to know what you need to be doing in that side of your life. Oh, and then, of course, we'll be giving away some copies of the Wealth Chef book as well, which also covers all the elements. And with that, there's also you can go to the website, download all the spreadsheets and the tools that go with that as well. Yeah, because you've perfected this. As you say, there are all these little tools. And if somebody, I think most of us need that. We just need a system where we getting into the system. Somebody's worked that system out for us and we just focus on, on on directing our lives and engineering that wealth. Absolutely. And having, when we realize, ah, there's a systematic way that we just keep doing that. I often say, you know, boring is beautiful. Yeah. Often we, you know, want to have lots of different things and overcomplicate, but when we can get the fundamentals right, and then a lot of it is about just being consistent in business, in life, consistency and showing up for ourselves is so key. And community is also vital. Like coming back to where do we have a place to have empowered money conversations where we can have clean conversations about investing, not hype and machismo and bullshit or fear. And so with Savvy Investor, there's also a six months membership to my Wealth Builder Club where there's monthly open Q&A with me. We have masterclasses every month. There's an amazing community where people sharing their wins can ask questions. Um, do you offer people access to their club if they haven't done Savvy Investor? So what we found is that with um, Wealth Builders, and so it's called the Wealth Builder Club, is the need the foundational training in that. And so it's either in Financial Freedom University, which is an even bigger one. It covers a whole lot of other aspects. But Savvy Investor focuses on the asset side. They get the six months with it. So we, we need, otherwise it ends up, people don't get the value. It's like you need to have your training course before exactly. you can go exactly. out and have your practice. I have the exact same. Um, and what I think it's just wonderful that you are using your time and your money to create impact in the environment because, you know, it is what we're leaving for future generations. And that is what I call also generational wealth is where you're able to leave a mark, have had an impact. And you're certainly doing that. And you are such an inspiration to all of us, to men and to women. Um, because I think that a lot of us just get stuck in the rut and you're going to help us get out of that rut. Absolutely. And it is, it feels a deep, deep privilege that, oof, you know, almost 25 years ago or well, 25 years ago, I realized I needed to make a change and I got curious and I started on a path to freedom and I am now so clear that for me, that my big contributions that I can make, if I can help people get into right relationship with their money and free them from that anxiety in their journey so they can live their truthful life, that they can then start directing things to joy and that I can also then support the environment, which is the very place we live. I think I, that is a contribution I can make in the world and it brings me huge joy and meaning and purpose and it is a privilege. Yeah. Well, on that note, I think that's a beautiful note to end on. Thank you so much for your time, your energy, your enthusiasm for getting us all excited for what's to come. I have been through your training, but I definitely need to go through it again. And I think you've just inspired me to also just remain focused, you know, just keep our focus 
keep the vision and the consistency and community is absolutely key. And, and that's what we are growing with this um, Entrepreneur Summit is we're going to be growing a community of like-minded people who are all curious, just like you are. And wanting to live a full, amazing life. Yes. Well, stay at the summit, listen to the course and training and we'll have a blast. Thank you so much.